Well, welcome to another edition of Pastors Chat with yes. Coley and Tonks. It's a bit colder this week than last week. It is a make little sure bit. I got, yeah, yeah got, crazy. Nice and warm yeah, that. I know. That's why I thought I'd wear this one today. But <laughs> um, yeah, that, not quite that nice weather like we had last week. Oh, well, it is winter. Yeah, that's it. But um, we're continuing through, and we've been one of the great things about watching church online is we don't just have to watch our own church we can watch other churches oh absolutely i've loved watching some of my mates preach lately and i noticed you made a point of that that a couple of weeks ago on yeah, your yeah, facebook something and, on facebook a couple of weeks yeah, ago about it's just yeah. been nice some of us would yep. remember those who've been around the church for all remember like simon rissen mm. who was yep. the senior pastor here when i started at the church he's mm. down at horsham and just being able to watch those people yep. it's awesome yeah, it's great um so i just anytime they post a link on facebook with themselves preaching I'm like, oh i wonder what they're actually like i've known them for a long time and yeah. i've never heard them preach so it's fantastic yep. so it's been good so i was we we're wondering this week who are our favorite preachers and who mm. do we like to watch and it's a bit one of the things i don't like about preaching nowadays and what it might have been like preaching in the 90s and early 2000s you were always probably possibly one of the best preachers people knew if you got to yeah. preach back then like no one knew what other great preaching was unless maybe they had is it tbn the christian yeah. channel and stuff but the occasional old vhs mm, set. that's it <laughs> it's, it's come a long way now and you can just find the best preaching in the world just by yeah. picking up your phone and looking for it which is Absolutely. intimidating as a preacher when you think about it i'll try not to think about it too much <laughs> but um you can get some great content from it and i love listening to the best preachers in the world yeah and, yeah so who's your favorite preachers to listen to yeah who's well i picked one? a couple of really really good ones mm. the first one i want to share about is gene apple uh, gene apple is the senior pastor of uh, the east side christian church in la mm. it's one actually the, the largest church. and fastest growing churches of christ in the world yeah, and, um, phenomenal he's an incredible leader uh, you visited his I church did, as I well, did. haven't you? I was really disappointed because when we went there, Gene Apple wasn't preaching. Oh, it was no. one of his um, one of his lay preachers. Yeah. I was so disappointed. Now, I yeah. could probably say this about all the ones we speak about, mm. that they're all uh, fantastic teachers of the Bible. Mm. They are very true to the Word. Yep. They've got a great uh, conviction and they hold the Word of God up very, uh, much. Yep. very faithfully and all that. Mm. But what I love about Gene is what I see coming out from a, you know, a mega church pastor leading a church of thousands mm. but he's got this incredible pastoral heart mm. and that comes out in his preaching yeah. so much he, yeah. he's very caring he's very gentle he mm. brings a very strong conviction about stuff that's always done in that pastoral yeah. heart you know, i think way. what happens is gene went through a, a pretty nasty marriage breakup quite a few years ago mm. his wife uh, had an affair and, and left him so he understands brokenness mm. and he understands that you know life isn't always rosy it's not just victory to victory to victory there are mm. difficult things and he probably comes from that position of understanding brokenness and that pastoral heart that's been developed so that everything he preaches on is just that beautiful pastoral heart love grace the mercy of god and it's just very very uplifting and, and just enriching to mm. watch no, it's fantastic yeah he's um when i was at that church too just his congregation and his leadership i just have such a high respect for him oh, talk yeah. about how incredible he is and you see that a lot of churches but here's just something interesting and special about the way they mm. talk about him yeah. yeah well my first one is a guy that i mentioned if you've ever heard me preach you've probably heard me mention this guy's name but it's andy stanley mm. and there was actually a time where i didn't listen to andy stanley would you believe it was a while ago <laughs> but i always heard this guy quoted always heard people talk about him and yeah. I, his name rolls off your tongue and it's got that certain um i don't know what you call it just it's a name that you've heard of and i sort of said uh He's all right, maybe, I don't know, maybe I should listen to him. Mm. And then one day, it was actually Simon's brother, Jared, made us watch an Andy Stanley sermon when we were at a youth mm -hmm. um, thing down in Horsham, and it was called Breathing Room. And I'm like, this is phenomenal. So mm. I started following some more of his sermons. And um, I've been watching him weekly just about ever since. And that was probably about five years ago. Mm. And he's just, I just love the way he breaks it down. He doesn't always preach deep. I, he preaches deep quite regularly, but he's got this real gift to make you be able to understand certain things in the Bible that are hard to explain in a yeah. simple way. And I think that's one Makes of the, the gifts. complicated. Yeah, simple. that's one of the gifts of a really good preacher, I think. Yes. And you'll take a really big idea and condense it just about to a sentence sometimes so mm. that you can actually remember. Find I remember, I quote him a lot because you can remember the little things that he says mm. and it makes it easy to know what to do with it. Yeah. So he's um, very good. He's very mm. practical as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's why I like, very, very practical. Does a lot of yeah. stuff on relationships, yeah. marriage, mm. parenting. Yeah, it does that sort of, you know what to do with it and it mm. really applies to your life um, yep. with what you do. And he's got a real culture of always preaching uh, to the unchurched as well, which I really appreciate. So he always tries to talk so that an unchurched would understand what he says as much as a church yes. person. Mm. Absolutely. We're not just here to fatten up the that's sheep. That's right, exactly. I think, which mm. is, I think, important and one of the challenges in 
of preaching. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Who else have you got there? Well, the next one I've got is uh, another Churches of Christ pastor from America, uh, Dudley Rutherford, oh, senior yeah. pastor of Shepherd of the Hills, another mm. church that's in LA. Yeah. Uh, another one that I visited when I, I went to America on a study tour mm. uh, a number of years ago. And uh, Dudley is someone who preaches just with absolute authority. Mm. He got commands the stage. He's got this big, deep, very, very powerful voice. And it just adds so much power and authority to what, what he's having to say. You know, I, I feel like I want to uh, respond to the altar call every time he preaches. It's mm. just so mm. convicting and challenging again because of that authority that he seems to bring uh, and again another man with absolute conviction to the word of god mm. and he, he preaches it uh, so soundly uh, with that authority with uh, a, a real passion mm. um, and i love that I, I love preachers that preach that. with passion i swear mm. all the ones i've talked about are full of passion yep. Yep. but uh, dudley is another one of those ones you'll, you'll preach through books of the Bible and bring yeah. stuff out I've never thought of before. Mm. Like, wow, that is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, we did one on Acts. Mm. And I'd never heard Acts preach like it before. And that was absolutely mind-blowing. Mm. He's preached and, a real conviction, doesn't he? Oh, mm. it's fantastic. And, and he's where I first heard the story. I mean, we did yeah, yeah. the story as a yep. series a number of years ago. Yep. And so many people within our own congregation love that series. Mm. Uh, and it was through Dudley that I discovered that yeah, series. Great. I thought it was his great. own yeah, kind of okay. sermon series until he started to share about the story Bible and so yep. on. And uh, so he's been a great encouragement mm. to be able to get ideas. Yeah, from he's him. fantastic. He preached the best sermon I've ever heard on Paul. And I mm. can't find it anymore. I used to have it bookmarked uh, and it lost, yep. but it was just fascinating. It was the yep. um, one where Paul talks about the thorn in his side. It was just mm. a great, one of the best messages I've heard. Yep. Mm. Dudley's a big sports guy. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, he played, not professional, but he played very high level basketball. Mm. Uh, he got a scholarship through college of basketball yeah. and things. And so he's got this uh, thing like you'd probably love it. He uses a lot of sports illustrations. Yeah. He speaks oh, a lot about sounds like a great obviously song. American sports yeah. with gridiron and mm. basketball and baseball yeah. and so on. But um, it adds a real blokey mm, it side is. It is. to his preaching, yeah. which, which appeals to the, yeah. the men yeah. in us. That That's we, what you we want. want. That, that sport. Only thing I don't inside. like about him actually is a uh, LA Lakers fanatic. Oh which is yeah! Really disappointing. Nobody really wants to hear yeah. about those that the second best team in LA. But yeah. oh well, that's what I you get. Something about his church. Yeah. I don't know whether you saw this, but at his church, um, Shepherd of the Hills, they built an auditorium with an NBA-rated basketball yeah. court. And while the Lakers were doing renovations to their home court, they actually used his church wow. to do some training just for a couple oh, of weeks. It's incredible. Could you imagine that? Mm. Hey, Just, what are we doing this week at Youth yeah. Group, Coley? Watching the oh, Lakers. Watching the Lakers yeah. train. That's incredible, <laughs> About isn't it? 50,000 kids come to Youth Group that week. Insane. <laughs> insane. Hey. Oh. Well, my next one uh, is someone who's quite different style of preaching to Andy Stanley, and um, that, that is uh, Tim Keller. Mm. And he's a really good author. He's a really good preacher as well. You've got to have a bit more time to listen to his sermons because they're about 50 minutes on oh. average. Yeah. Wow. But um, at first, he's got a very different tone. Like you'd think that he's he preaches about some very deep topics and he um, preaches quite a specific st style. Mm. He just grabs you on the edge of your seat. Like I just listen. It feels like 10 minutes, but mm. he's got a real gift for um, using illustrations in a powerful way. And he doesn't tell many stories in his preaching like about himself. Mm. But he tells stories in a really powerful way to understand an idea. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones I always remember is he talked about salt and steak and how when you season a steak with salt, you never go, oh, how good's the salt? Yeah, how good's the steak? And he was talking about the salt of the earth. Mm. And he uses those kind of illustrations throughout all his preaching. Mm. And they just bring a real, you understand again, um, ideas in the Bible that can be hard to understand. And yeah. it just goes so deep. Like, yeah. Um, if you ever YouTube a still small voice by Tim Keller, one of the best sermons you ever hear. Okay. But he does just so many good so where's sermons. He from? He's from Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York. Yeah, he's recently in the last year or so given that to someone else but he still does quite a bit of preaching on his podcast so i don't know if um, he's still preaching regularly or if he's got such a backlog yeah because mm. his sermons disappeared for about a year and i was worried wow. about what happened and now they're all back up again so yeah redeemer presbyterian is the mm. name of that yeah excellent i'll have to check him out that's one mm. i haven't heard yeah no he's quite good yeah mm. very good different style to the others where the others have got a real um, how would you say it? Really engaging way of speaking. He's just still very engaging in a very different way. Yep. Mm. Excellent. It's good to have a bit of variety, it is, it not is. just the same 
kind of preacher, yep. same topic, same yeah, exactly. style. Exactly. You want something very yeah. different. Yep. Well, my third and final one I share is certainly different, and that's um, Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley, senior pastor of World Harvest Church. Now, Rod Parsley is one of the most Pentecostal preachers I've ever heard, and that's normally not something that I get into. I'm not saying anything wrong with the Pentecostal style, but it's just not something that I personally mm -hmm. would, would choose to watch. And yet, Amen, brother. Uh, sometimes Rod Parsley stuff, you know, he's always got the organ going yep. and all that yeah, kind of yep. stuff. Uh, and there's one major thing I, I really dislike about Rod Parsley, and that is he's very much into the prosperity doctrine, which I, I'm not a fan of at all. Mm -hmm. But what wins me over is I've never heard a preacher preach the gospel message of salvation through Christ mm. like he does. Yep. It, there's just this uncompromising commitment to preach Christ, to preach that we're only saved through Jesus. It's only through the cross. Mm. Um, there's no ifs, buts. There's no watering it down. There's no wishy-washiness or anything like that. It's just this incredibly powerful, powerful thing. And again, he preaches the gospel and I want to give my life to Jesus every single time. It's just, it's <laughs> yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, wow. And uh, I've seen some of his live, uh, or, you know, DVDs or online messages, and he'll preach his gospel message with this incredible conviction, this incredible passion for Jesus, for the cross, and all that. And he'll do an altar call, mm. and it's not like you know, like sometimes we'll do an altar call, and, and you know, during the next song, come forward, and everyone waits, and yep. we'll wait, and then someone will come in. This is like. If you want to come to Jesus, come now. And just dozens of people run yeah, to wow. the front yeah. of, of the auditorium and give their lives to Christ. And mm. it's just incredible evangelistic gift, preaching gift with, uh, as I say, this unbelievable passion for Jesus. Mm. And I mean, every preacher should want. have that oh, passion exactly. for Jesus yep. and passion for mm. the gospel. But you know, it's not like 10 ways to overcome worry or yep. five ways to a better marriage. Again, mm. nothing wrong with those sermons. Yep. I like those sermons. But... You know, and we're not preaching that Christ crucified salvation mm. is the way, the truth, and the life. Then we're That's missing it. something. That's it. So, uh, That's it. Rod Parsley, uh, really fantastic. Knows how to I've watched him. I've only message. only seen him once or twice. I reckon. Yeah. So check him out. Uh, my last one is a guy called Mark Clark. Now, Mark, I've only recently got onto him. I read a book by him, which I actually mentioned in our podcast, mm -hmm. and I've started watching his sermons. And he's from Canada, and uh, he's in a place called This Is Village. He's actually a really intense preacher. It's you feel like he's yelling at you a little bit in a in a funny way. It's hard to he's just he speaks a mile a minute. Like if, if you think Andy Stanley preaches fast, this guy's faster than him the way he speaks. It's um hard to keep up with at first. Play a bit of catch up. Yeah, but he's like to write notes. Yeah, I don't bother with like he's just too too quick. <laughs> Pushing the pause button. Yeah. But um, he's a phenomenal preacher. Yeah, he puts a lot of apologetics through his preaching, yep. which I actually don't mind the way he does it and the style he does it. I actually enjoy where I don't always appreciate that. Yeah, we've got a few members yeah. that are writing apologetics. Yeah, and, and he's like quite big out. on that. And um, he's just really good. He's actually going through the Psalms at the moment, mm, talking about right. um, picking different Psalms and going through what they are. And he's just um, just very passionate and really intense. But he's, he's also a real blokey bloke as well. Yep. Like he's not that sort of... He's, he's definitely not gentle, which mm. I kind of like the way that he's not gentle in, in a good way. So he, um, he almost preaches that style, makes you sort of want to man up. And mm. yeah, he's very good. So Mark good Clark, that is. This is Village is yeah. uh, where you'll find his stuff. So but, I think um, all of these preachers, they've got fantastic websites, mm. podcasts, yep. online sermons. So, so easy to get their content. We'll put the details in yep, the, we will. the notes yep. at the bottom of this video. And you can watch them and comment. Who are your favorite preachers? Who do you like to listen to? Don't flood it with Josh Cole at the bottom, but please put some other ones that are going around as well. But feel free to yeah, whack us in to, if you want. To see because we'd love to know. Again, more resources for us all. That's it. So you can check it out. Yep. And as I said, Andy Stanley links. was just because someone else showed me one of his sermons yeah. and ever since. Well, that's our time all up today. So thanks for joining us for another episode of Pastor's Chat. Absolutely. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Good on you. See you. Have a good week.